Oh! Hello everybody, my name is Sniping is Fun, and I welcome you all back to the next character on the series of newcomer ideas for the upcoming Smash Bros. game on Nintendo Switch. We left off on character number 43, who was the classic pro wrestling legend Starman, and this time we're jumping back for character number 44 into the world of Fire Emblem with Lin. Now, just like always, Three separate categories. Why does the character make sense to be in Smash Brothers? What are the reason, you know, the who set ideas I could think of for them? And percentage chance I could see him being in the game. So far we've talked about a potential player from 16 character and all Celica from Echoes. This time I'm going to be talking about Lin. And now, why does Lin make sense? First and foremost, and I don't value this reason as much as other people apparently seem to, because this is one of the reasons they always seem to recommend Lin for Smash Brothers. She's one of the original lords that came to the West. When Fire Emblem 7 Reckon No Ken was localized back in 2003, it was her, Eli Wood, and Hector. And they all seemed, and a lot of people seem to value that as a major, major reason because she's the original lord in the West, or one of the few at least. I don't value that as much. I'm sta that's why I'm stating it as my first reason right here. I value it, but I value it so much less than these other reasons. So much less because that reason is 15 years old, people. I'm not going to value that reason above anything else I'm going to state right now because that value, that the value of that reason is 15 years old. Just because she's the original Lord doesn't really mean anything. It does mean something, but it doesn't mean as much as I think a lot of people out there are giving it credit for. But I'm not going to deny it that Lynn was one of the original Lords when Fire Emblem was localized. One of the original Lords from America and Europe and whatnot that they got to experience with Fire Emblem. She was one of the original Lords alongside Roy's dad, Eli Wood and Hector. And I'm going to say that right now that I'm going to put that as one of my reasons here, but it's one of my least likely reasons. Because it doesn't really mean too much anymore now that we have, you know, Sacred Stones and Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn and Awakening and Fates and Echoes and whatnot now. Just saying. But I will, will give credit where credit is due that she was one of the original lords in the game. I'm saying that as a minor, minor, minor reason. She was also, in that reason, she was also a character pick for not only Fire Emblem Heroes, Nintendo's first, one of their first, you know, mobile games alongside like Mario Run and whatnot. Fire Emblem got the, was one of the franchises that got the first, one of the first appearances as a mobile game from Nintendo. She also was one of the characters, not included in the main three, on Fire Emblem Warriors. They included, you know, Fates, Awakening, and Shadow Dragon, and then outside of that they include Celica from, you know, Echoes and Gaiden. And they include Lynn from 7 slash Rapid No Ken. So she was at least included in side games, the spin-off game on the phone and the Warrior spin-off on the you know the Switch and the 3DS. Has to have some importance there if they use her for that. And due to the fact that we saw a remake of you know Gaiden and Echo Shadows of Plenty on the 3DS, and a remake of the first game and the third game with Shadow Dragon and Heroes of Light and Shadow on the DS, even though one of them never came outside of Japan. There's an inevitable chance that they're going to remake other older Fire Emblem games. Fire Emblem 4, Fire Emblem 5, Fire Emblem 6, Fire Emblem 7, and whatnot. And like I just basically mentioned there, Fire Emblem 7. It's inevitable, given its popularity especially, that Fire Emblem 7 will one day get a remake and we will see a future mainline game because of a remake with Lin in it. So there's still an inevitable chance she might eventually come back in a mainline entry. On top of that, she's been used as DLC lately, too. She was DLC as a character in Fire Emblem Awakening. I believe in Fire Emblem Fates as well, she was a DLC character. And she's been included in Smash Bros. in the Assist Trophy so far, and I don't value that as highly as a lot of people seem to do. They always be like, oh, Lil Mac was an Assist Trophy, and then he became a playable character, but that's more so because Puncho got revived on the Wii in 2009, not because he was an Assist Trophy. I don't value that as highly as other people do, just like I don't value because she's one of the original Lords. But I do put some a little bit of value in it. And I'm, I'm not saying I don't count it. I'm just saying I don't value it as much. But her being an assist trophy kind of at least has her history in the Smash Bros. series somehow. And her fighting style is different. She has a different sort of fighting style. Usually we do kind of see her at least some variations with two swords, which we have yet to have that in Smash Bros. yet. And even then, for a single sword fighting style, it's different than an Ike or a Link or, you know, Shulk or a Marth or a Roy or a Robin or a Meta Knight, or any of the characters in the Smash Bros. franchise that have had swords. So it's still, her style is different and makes her stand out a little bit more. And those are the reasons why I think she makes sense to get in. You know, one of the original Lords, her fighting style, there's inevitably going to be a remake of Seven. You know, Fire Warriors inclusion, Fire Emblem, you know, Heroes inclusion, she was DLC and stuff like 
guiding and, and guide and um awakening fates you know and, and assist trophy in, in smash brothers so far you she at least has something going for her i think um the second category now let's talk about like a moveset idea that i think of for her like her moveset wouldn't be too distinctly different than what we've already seen in, her, in smash brothers so she comes out takes out her sword and starts jumping around with the you know thing and slicing people over her sword that's basically what i'm going for except i'm going specifically for her two sword fighting style her manakati 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 i'm making up pronunciations right now her smash attacks will be solely her pulling out her two swords and slicing people up with that sword attacks two sword swings from the manakati which are basically her main main weapons anyways so i want to differentiate her from robin from roy from you know corin from lucina and all that stuff and from all marcelica if they get in or if i am 16 character if they get in i want to differentiate her musa here because of that so i'm giving her two sword style manicati sword swings and then for her special attacks because there's nothing really distinctly different there so that's the reason i'm jumping on special attacks right now her it's pretty simple and so in smash right if you play the games you've seen how she swings her swords if you play if you've seen her trophy in smash brothers you know how she swings her swords I'm not going to go into super detail on that, but she's going to swing her swords, you know, downward strikes, maybe a diagonal cross slash, you know, different types of ways. If you know how fighters normally swing two different swords, that's what I'm going to give her, two different swords. I'm going to make her special attacks mostly based on her use of a bow, and she does use a bow in Awakening, I believe, and she does use a bow in different variations on her fighting style. She's not solely just a sword user. I think that only really applied to Fire Emblem 7, but I think after that use for a character in Heroes and Warriors and Awakening and whatnot, they've kind of started getting more stuff to her. So just like Alm can use a bow, I'm going to say her smash attacks, or her special attacks, would be mainly a use of a bow or various different items you could use in the game, like different like like items you could pick up and use for weapon attack type stuff. But I'm gonna say mostly a bow. So basically, it's gonna be Link with two swords. That's basically what I'm seeing her style is, except she's way more agile than Link really is. So her smash attacks would be the double swords, and her special attacks would mostly be a bow with a use of maybe small different little items. Because in the, in the Fire Emblem series, there are different little items you can use that you can pick and you can use to bat battle with, at least in later games. So I'd say maybe so picking up those items and throwing them at opponents as well as some ranged attacks. And then maybe some of the super special double sword attacks, like some of the more powerful sword attacks can be in the B range as well. And the, in the B attacks and the special attacks. So maybe throw a couple of sword swings, and, but like the really special, really strong, really stylistic like representation of how she swings a sword and her special attacks. But mostly make the special attacks focus on her use of a bow and some use of items from the Fire Emblem series because you can use some of them to attack. And then the smash attacks will all be the Manakati double sword swing strikes type stuff I said. Now as for a final smash, it has to be the Soul Kati. The Soul Kati Critical. And you, if you go online and type in Lin Critical Fire 7, Lin Soul Kati Critical, you'll see what it is. It's where she makes her little three or four different silo, like you know, shadow version of herself. And she jumps like around the stage and starts slicing stuff up. So she'll stand in front of her. You'll, she'll use the power smash, they'll, they'll come out, and then she'll just jump around the stage, start slicing up, and you'll have to be really agile to the, you know, to evade her attacks. You'll have to be very agile to not get hit, because it's not a cutscene. She just jumps around the stage, slicing you up. So you have to make sure you're not in her line of sight when she does it. You can't control it either, she just does it on the stage. So... That's basically what because that's like her ultimate attack. She takes out one sword. It's a soul, Kali, soul, one soul. And she just jumps around the stage and starts attacking you. So she'll focus on the double swords when she fights normally, but her one more powerful sword when she does her final smash. That's how I'm going to do her, her, her attacks and for a moveset. Now, in terms of percentage chance I can see her getting in, Lynn, um, I'm going to give her a 60% chance. She's not as highly likely as she used to be. And I, I know people say, oh, but she's the one of the most original lords and, and this and popular. I said I don't value popularity and, you know, push from, and, you know, demand and popularity and push from gamers what they want over, you know, relevancy, recency, push from Nintendo, push from third parties, push from, you know, the higher ups kind of thing. And I don't value her being an original lord as much as because that's 15 years ago, people. I'm not going to value something that's that long ago and she has not been in the main series since then. But what she has is she still gets utilized in spinoffs. She still gets utilized in Warriors and Heroes. She's DLC in pretty much every single game to be like an extra character you can add to your Awakening Fates armies and whatnot. She's still utilized 
and there's inevitably going to be a remake. So she still has a chance. And I do value her popularity. I do say I value popularity and demand too. Just a lot less likely. That's the reason I'm giving her 60%. She has a 60% because Intelligent System still uses her in spinoffs. Intelligent System still uses her as like a DLC thing or a spinoff or her name value in Smash Brothers and whatnot. And the possibility we'll see a game from her, like a Smash, you know, like not Smash, but, you know, Fire Emblem 7 Remake at some point. But she loses 40% because her own game, her main series, Entry Fire Emblem 7, is 15 years old now. It's not a relevant recent game, and she hasn't been in a recent game in quite some time. And I think that hurts her because they always seem to pick, Sakura always seems to pick more relevant recent games. And right now that's Echoes, and that's the upcoming Fire Emblem 16. That's the reason why I'm giving Alm, Salika, and the Fire Emblem 16 character higher percent chance. But she still has a chance because of her popularity demand and use of side games and the potential remake in the future, or a sequel to her game maybe in the future, which is Fire Emblem 16, eh, 16 Fire Emblem you know, 6. If they decide to include a Fire Emblem 6 remake and make her a character in the story more relevant now, I don't know. You never know what could happen. But I'm giving her a 60% chance. She's not one of the most likely Fire Emblem newcomers we'll see in Smash Bros. 5, but she is one of the more medium choices. She's not as high up as like Alm, Salika, Fire Emblem 16 character, whatever, but she's higher than a lot of characters people seem to you know, recommend as well, too. So it kind of goes here or there. But I'm giving her a 60% chance. She's a decent choice. She's just not very likely. Her biggest chance was going to be in Brawl. Like, I'm seriously going to say it right now. Her best chance of ever getting the Smash Brothers was Brawl, and they missed the boat when they made her an assist trophy. Because then, after that, more games came out. Sacred Stones, Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, Shadow Dragon, Heroes of Light and Shadow, Awakening, Fates, Echoes, The Subcoming Fire 16. Her game's just not super relevant nowadays, and that hurts her chances, despite if you want to agree with me or not, it does hurt her chances. I'd like to see her in, but she has to be more relevant to the Fire Emblem series for that to happen. And I'm sorry for saying that, and if you don't agree with me. That's just how it is, I guess. My name is Sniper's Fun. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to. Have a lovely day. And put that comment below. Like, do you guys like? You guys want to see Lin in? What reasons do like, you think it makes sense for her to get in? What about my reasons? What about my most ideas? What most ideas could you think of? Is sixty percent too low? Too high? Whatever. We can discuss it there. Have fun. E three is only a couple hours away <laughs> from whenever this uploads. And that's it. And that's character number forty four. And we're gonna get on to character number forty five when I jump into the world of Final Fantasy. With Tara Branford from Final Fantasy VI. See you all later.